We're wrapping up a series today that uh, we've been calling Like a Little Child. And uh, it comes from the story that we find in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, where some parents have been bringing their children uh, up to Jesus to pray for them or to lay hands on them and uh, just to bless them. And his disciples were, no, 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 no. Jesus doesn't have time for you. He's important. He's the son of God. Get these kids away from here. And Jesus was like, no. And he turned it into a teaching moment. He said, let the little children come to me. And then this is what he says in Mark 10, 15. He says, I tell you the truth. Anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God, how? Like a little child will never enter it. We have to enter the kingdom of God like a little child. He's saying, I want you to have faith in me and faith in God like a little child. I want you to believe with purity and simplicity of faith, just like a little child. And this is something that I see so missing in uh, so much of the church today is just a simple, childlike, trusting faith in Jesus, in God, and in uh, all the things about him. We have a hard time just trusting and obeying. We have a hard time just really believing that God said what he meant and that he meant what he said in his word. And some people even have a hard time believing that the Bible is God's word to us today. We want to make it all some big convoluted theoretical sort of a thing. And whenever you do that, the more you do that, the further away from God you go and the more humanistic your religion will become. And so we need to uh, just uh, cast away and cast aside all that other stuff and just run with what Jesus has given us and what God has given us through his word and through his church down through the centuries. So uh, some of the attributes we've been looking at that we should uh, just embrace in a childlike way or uh, first of all, uh, we need to uh, uh, just, uh, uh, let's see if I can even remember what those things are now. But, uh, you know, I'm not going to review those with you now. Let's just go ahead and get started today. The thing is, as we've looked at these attributes, the one I want us to look at today is one that we find underscored in what many people call the Christmas story. And uh, I think it's great that we're looking at this just as Easter is approaching because it, uh, it, it gets it out of just being another story we read or hear at Easter. But in this story, we see that uh, the angel Gabriel has come to Mary and he is uh, speaking in Luke the cha in chapter 1. And just imagine hearing this story for the first time, like you're a little child. And the scripture teaches us that this angel appears to a young lady named Mary, who's a virgin. And he says, greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. And the angel of the Lord then says, you're going to give birth to the son of God and you'll give him the name Jesus and he will be the son of the most high. And she asks uh, what any of us would have asked at a time like that. How will this be? She says, since I'm a virgin. And the angel answers in verse 35, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the most high will overshadow you. So the Holy One will be born and will be called the Son of God. And then this is the key verse for the day. For nothing is impossible with God. I want you to say that with me now. 
for nothing is impossible with God. All of a sudden, 700 year old prophecies were just getting ready to start unfolding right and left. God was about to do something that a human being could never do. What's impossible for man is possible for God. And through a young virgin girl, God would become flesh and would dwell in this world. And the angel declares the truth that I pray you will believe like a child that nothing is impossible with God. And this is the attribute. Sometimes it's referred to as the omnipotence of God. And that means he's all powerful. You won't find the word omnipotent in the Bible, but you will find about 350 times the word almighty or all powerful. And this word is only used of God. And this is it's just so important. If you remember week one, we did look at the goodness of God when a child would say, my God is for me. And then we looked at the presence of God and how a little child would say, my God is with me. And then in week three, last week, we looked at the grace of God. My God forgives me. And this week, we're looking at the power of God. And the way a child would say it would say, he would say, or she would say, my God can do anything. That's childlike faith. My God can do anything. I've shared with you uh, just a few weeks ago about the time whenever I was a little child and I had been ill for some time and the radio uh, speaker uh, said that if uh, I'd put my hand on the radio uh, that as, a, as a point of f contact is the way he said it, that he would pray for me and I'd be made whole. And childlike, I was about, I wasn't as old as Cheyenne, but I was, as a child, I was probably about six, I guess. And I just went over, believing what the young, what the, what the guy said, put my hand on the radio, and it happened. I was healed. Childlike faith, God honored. Later on, you know, I told you also about the time that my son was spending the night over at a friend's house and his big brother had broken his foot and his brother was crying into the night. And Joel said, did you know that Jesus can heal that foot? And he said, no. He said, yeah, if you'd like, I can pray for you and Jesus will heal you. Would you like for me to pray for you? And he said, yeah. So Joel prayed for him and his foot was healed which was such a blessing because these people were so poor, they couldn't afford to take him to the doctor. And uh, that household came to know the Lord because a little boy about 10 years old had a childlike faith and was willing to live out of it. Well, um, the thing is, and I read this this past week, and I really like it, and we need to all remember it as we're facing life. Nothing is so big that God cannot handle it or so small that he cannot use it. So if there's one thing I want to get across to you today, if nothing else, no matter what you're facing, no matter how big it is, it's not bigger than your God. And so if you've been telling God how big your mountains are, you need to stop it and start telling your mountains how big your God is because we serve a big God. And if you've been sm feeling small and insignificant and like you don't really count in the scheme of things, then this second part comes into play. He's so big that nothing is so small that he cannot use it. And that means that as insignificant as you might feel, you're significant and he can use you and he will use you as you open your life and your heart in faith before him. Nothing is impossible with God. Well, I can guarantee you right now at this moment, there are many of you facing 
impossible challenges, significant trials, situations that you don't know how to get out of or how to handle, and you genuinely need the power of God. You need the power of the God who can do anything right there with you. In fact, in life, this is pretty true uh, when it says you're either coming out of a hard time, you're in the middle of a hard time, or you're about to go into a hard time. That's just pretty much life, isn't it? The way I've summed my life out before is as my life has been a series of crises punctuated by miracles. We're going to have tough times, but there's a God that's there with us, and he gets us through every one of them. Just look at our prayer list, and you'll see this is common. We're not spared tough times, but we're to take heart because we're, we're serving a God that's bigger than our tough times. There are those of you, either in your life or in the lives of people that are very close to you, that really need the faith to believe in a God who says, with me, all things are possible. And so that's my goal today. And so in order to uh, bring you, to help bring you closer to that, I can't give you faith, but hopefully something I say today will help strengthen your faith. I just will look at three different things. The first one, if you face something impossible and you think, I can't do anything about this, I think a child will say, well, my God can, don't you think? Let's say that out loud. My God can. Let's say it together. My God can. You know, I love Jeremiah's words in Jeremiah 32, verse 17, where it says, O sovereign Lord, you've made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arms. Every now and then you just need to look at the glory of creation, I think. Look at a beach or a mountain or a sunrise or a sunset at night or on a clear, clear night. Just look through all those millions of stars and just say, wow, my God did that. With his spoken words, he created this world. And if he could do that with his power, then I would say this. Nothing is too hard for you. And that's what Jeremiah said to the Lord. Nothing is too hard for you. My God can. I love when I see the faith of a little child who believes with just a simple purity that my God can do anything. Well, for those uh, of you that are Christians and have faith in the power of God, I want to ask you some questions. And if you believe God can, I want you just to respond with this to the question with my God can. How many of you, if you have a broken relationship and you can't seem to forgive or get over it and it is strained, how many of you believe that God can heal and restore that relationship to be even better than new? If you believe that he can, say, my God can. Let's say it together. My God can. Well, I wonder if anybody here believes if you're in financial trouble, that we serve a God who is the provider and he can rescue you from financial bondage. If you believe it, say it like you mean it. My God can. Now, I wonder if there's anybody here who believes in a God that heals, that the name of Jesus is bigger and stronger than any name that uh, uh, than any other name that might be. And that at the name of Jesus and by his stripes, we can be healed. If you believe in a God who heals, say, my God can. My God can. I wonder if there are any of you who have people that you love that don't believe in God, but uh, you believe that God can reach them by his power. And in your spirit, do you think that God can reach those that you love, that, but that they don't know him? If you believe that, let's say it. My God can. I believe in the power of God. I have seen it 
at work all around me time and time again. Now, the second thing we want to look at, not only will a child believe in a God that can, and this is so important, people, but a child will also believe my God will. This is so important. And this is uh, so many people suffer from this uh, idea that, yeah, well, I know that God can, but I just don't know if he will. And then some people, they go on and it's, I know he can and he will for others, but for some reason, I just don't think he will for me. And that is where faith really begins, I do believe. It's when you realize that all of this stuff isn't just for all those people around you, but it's for you and you and you and you and you and you. He wants us all to have that faith of a little child that believes that their father cares about them and is willing to help them. He is able and he is willing. Let's pray. Lord, as I bow before you this morning, I just uh, lift up all that are listening here and all that are going to be listening in the coming week. And I just pray that uh, spirits will be quickened to realize that all this stuff that they've heard and all this stuff that they know about you is for them. And that they can walk in your presence and in your power and they can see you at work in their lives. And I pray that you would just uh, sweep any doubts that people have out of the way and just help them to know that you care, that you can, and you will. I pray this in Jesus' name. There is one more thing I need to talk to you about, and that is that, yes, there are those times when... uh, You know that God uh, can, and you believe that he will, but for some reason, things just don't seem to be panning out. The last question, the last thing I want to bring up is, what do you do when you know he can and you believe he will, and he does not, then what do you do? Now, I'm not saying this to cast doubt. I'm saying it because sometimes it happens If you don't believe it happens, let's look a few years later after this angel has appeared to Mary. And Mary is there with her son having nails being driven into his hands. He has been beaten to where his face is such a pulp that you can't even recognize him as a human being. This is her child and her child is hurting so terribly. Don't you know that she was just crying out in her heart, God, make it stop. And yet he didn't. There will be those times, but there was a reason why God didn't stop it. It's the same reason why whenever Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane and said, if it be possible, let this pass from me. It's because sometimes God has things that are bigger than what we want, but they're for our own good. As horrible as it must have been for Mary, Jesus died there for her good. And what looked so terrible at the moment was good for her, and it was good for all the rest of us. And we need to have that faith that God in his ultimate wisdom, knows what's best. And so, whenever those times come, don't give up faith just because he's not doing what you're asking him to do at the moment, but trust that he has something bigger in store for you, and don't give up your faith. Trust. There's a reason. You may not understand it now, but it's bigger than you could ever imagine. And it's for the best for you and the biggest good possible in your life. That being said, 
There's nothing we face that can overcome us and overwhelm us because our God is a God that cares. He's a God that can. And he's a God that's going to do the ultimate best for each one of us. Just like sometimes your children may ask for things that aren't good for them. Sometimes we ask for things that aren't good for us. As good parents, we give good gifts to our children. As the greatest parent, God has the best for us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.